Welcome back to the Bluegrass on this beautiful February morning. I'm out with Hank. Hank is about a five and a half month old Catahoula Leopard dog. He's been in a couple of videos here lately and uh, everybody seems to like him so we thought we'd do one more with him. All right, so uh, today we're gonna answer a question that I get all the time or attempt to answer it, which is, hey, Uncle Stoney, why does my dog like most dogs but doesn't get along well at all with others? Okay, so here we have Hank, and uh, like we're going to walk Hank on the course, and we're just going to see him uh, as he interacts with these other dogs. And I'm going to give him some attention, and I'm going to give him some treats, and we're going to see whether or not uh, you know he's pretty cool with that, and he does seem to be. Okay, so this is uh, Lily Honaby, and then we have a couple of Labrador Retriever puppies. We have a Springer Spaniel puppy. Uh, we have a bunch of full bred Black Labs. We have an Australian Shepherd. Come on, come on, nerds. And look, as I'm walking around, you can see that Hank is perfectly fine with these other dogs, okay? Now, in a minute, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna put some of these dogs up, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna bring out a, uh, a big dog that we have now. Uh, his name is Taji, and we're gonna see uh, whether or not Hank has the same type of reaction to Taji. Now, Hank and Taji have never had any kind of conflict. They've never had any kind of trouble with each other. It's just that the very first time that Hank saw Taji, he had a little, little bit different perception about, you know, about where Taji fits into the social structure of our little group here, okay? And so that's gonna be very interesting, okay? Now, when, when we bring Taji out, uh, you know, I want you guys to take a look and I want you to compare and contrast how Hank responds to Taji with how he's, you know, responding to these other dogs. Watch, I'm gonna put him up here on this table. Wait, here, now look, I'm gonna, just to show you, look, I can pet on him and love on these other dogs. He's real cool with that. Uh, I can give him some treats. I can give these other dogs some treats. And he's, you know, fine with sharing. Good. Shekels comes up. A lot of times if a dog's going to have a problem with a dog, <laughs> it'll be an Australian Shepherd, you know. If you've been to the dog park much with Australian Shepherds, you know what I'm talking about. All right, but look, he's really cool. Look, I'm going to love on Leroy. Oh, my gosh. I love on Hank. I love on this baby. Oh, my gosh. Look, he's very cool with that. Let's go. Okay, so now for those of you who are familiar with the Catahoula, like tell me, does, is, does that seem natural that he's cool with all these different dogs? You know, one of the things you'll notice in the uh, other Catahoula videos is that a lot of people talk about how intolerant Catahoulas are of other dogs. But for every comment where you hear about the Catahoula being intolerant towards another dog, there's another comment where somebody's talking about what a fa great family dog that their Catahoula was and how he got along with their chickens and their cats and their babies and all that kind of stuff. Well, what accounts for that? What accounts for the perception in people's mind that dogs like say a Catahoula or another you know, kind of dog is bred to do similar things? What accounts for that dichotomy of perception where some people look at them and they see them for being big, tough, aggressive uh, dogs with a distinct in-group, out-group preference, stay, and other people look at them and see a friendly, loving, loyal, protective dog, and are those things uh, mutually exclusive? Uh, you know, from my perspective, I do not believe that they are mutually exclusive, but I'm anxious to hear what you have to say. Okay, so here we go. That's what we have so far. Oh my gosh, look at all these good dogs. Everybody's being a good dog. Everybody's hanging out. Hank's being very uh, accepting of being mobbed on by other dogs. He's walked politely, you know, has good basic obedience in relation to other dogs. So that's what we're starting with. Okay, now we're gonna put some of these dogs up and we're gonna bring Taji out and uh, we're gonna see if, if Hank has a different reaction. And then I'd lo love to hear your uh, reasoning as to why the reaction is different if it is different. Okay, so we just put all the dogs up except Hank, and my assistant has went to get Taji. Uh, now, uh, I'm still not going to tell you what kind of dog Taji is. I asked you the other day, and uh, everybody's you know kind of making different answers. And the reason that I don't always answer when I ask you things about dogs is because I really want to foster like uh, discussion in the comment section, but I also want to illustrate that people very rarely know. Uh, quite as much about dogs as they think they know, you know? And so when I ask questions, kind of open-ended questions, it, uh, and you see people arguing or coming up with different answers, it kind of reminds you that you have to take people's opinions with a grain of salt, okay? Come on, up, 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 up. So 
I'm gonna walk right over here, hop over these barrels, and then I'm gonna have my assistant let Taji out. Now you see how relaxed this dog's posture is. He's just chilling, he's really happy. Okay, now go ahead and let Taji out. Now look at this immediate posture change. Now, what accounts for that? So you guys have watched this dog hang out with, what, seven or eight other dogs earlier, you know, ranging in different sizes. Okay, but why all of a sudden does he have that reaction to Taji? Okay. Now listen to that noise he's making. It makes a very intimidating noise for a five and a half month old dog. You know, but what accounts for that? Like, what is going through his mind right now? Is it because Taji, like, looks like he could be dangerous and all the other dogs didn't really look like they could be dangerous? You know, is his threat perception that on point where he can say, look, Dad, like, I, normally I would be very obedient. Like, look, I'm going to try to get him to walk. Come on, buddy. Come on. I'm going to try to get him to walk and see if he can stay focused. But you see, he's really worried. Imagine that you and I were walking somewhere, but you were really convinced that someone was following us that was going to kill us. You know, like, and I'm not saying he has any reason to believe that, you know, but obviously he's worried about Taji. So when you're out, look, 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 I mean, you just watched him walk this whole course and he did great. And now look, I'm having a real hard time controlling him. Come on, buddy. But when you're out with your dog, you know, and your dog acts a little bit different uh, when certain dogs show up at the dog park or show up on your walk, don't be so quick to be dismissive of what they're trying to tell you. What this dog here is trying to tell me is that there is a legitimate threat in the environment. Do you see that? Like he's really worried about Taji. Now I feel like after a you know certain amount of time, Hank and Taji will be friends, but look at this. He does not want Taji getting over here close to us. Now, a lot of people would give you a lot of recommendations on what to do right here in this situation, okay? That's not what this video is about. This video is just about showing you, okay, that your dog is going to have differential reactions based on environmental factors, okay? Now, this right here happens to be happening with a, a big dog that, that, that has maybe could be dangerous, okay? But this same thing happens with people. Like if you're out and your dog likes most people, there very well might be some people that your dog just considers a threat. And I'm not telling you that your dog's always right, but I would offer that maybe your dog's not always wrong, okay? Because out of all the dogs that we've seen so far today, Hank interacting, okay? Like if we, if we were honest, Taji is probably the only dog that has the capacity to harm uh, Hank and myself. Out of all those other dogs that were out here, not really any of them, if they got out of sorts and started acting like Cujo, uh, none of them are dogs that I couldn't handle pretty easily, okay? Look at this monster. What, what, what in the world am I gonna do if a big dog like that gets out of sorts, you know? I mean, he's a big, giant, powerful dog. And so, is Hank just like, is, is from Hank's perspective, is he just saying, look, this is common sense, dude. We have a giant dog here that looks like he's bred to kill wolves and other dogs. I, I think we better keep, uh, keep, him, keep him away, you know? He might be looking at me and go, hey, Stoney, you know what? Like, uh, I got a little bit of faith that you could handle them Labradors, but you're kind of looking a little bit old and a little bit soft nowadays. I'm not sure you can, you know, get a hold of that big LGD if he gets out of hand, you know? And is he right? Remember in that other video I was, uh, I said, you know, should a person have a dog they can't whip? And maybe, you know, maybe Hank is trying to like, you know, help me make a realization that I don't want to make for myself, which is maybe I shouldn't even have a big dog like that here at my kennel. You know, maybe if this was 10 years ago and I was a little bit more confident, I was a little bit more fit, I was a little bit more agile, I didn't limp as often, maybe Hank wouldn't be having to go to pieces. Maybe Hank is going, having to go to pieces because he senses that I'm no longer uh, capable of keep, keeping everybody safe and maybe he thinks he has to keep people safe. You know, but look at that. Look. Very nice. Listen to that weird noise it makes. <laughs> now luckily, Taji is having a pretty good reaction right now. Uh, I'm gonna be honest though. Come on, come on. When Taji first got here, 
very first thing he did was attack three different dogs. You know, he, he walked right up to them, bowed up over them, and then grabbed them by the back of their neck and started trying to shake them. And luckily, I was able to intervene. But like, so Hank is right. I mean, Hank understands the danger. So uh, anyway, I just thought that this would be a fun video. Get all you guys talking, get some discussion points in, you know, and uh, see if, see, see what you think about this behavior. You know, what explains, what explains the shift in this dog's behavior from when all the other dogs were out to when Taji's out? Because Taji, you know, Taji doesn't seem to be making any, <laughs> Taji doesn't seem to be making any <laughs> Taji doesn't seem to be making any overtly aggressive, <laughs> you know, overtures towards Hank, but that's not how Hank is taking it, okay? All right, well, I'm going I'm to get these guys put up before something goes wrong, but I am really interested in hearing how you guys break down this situation. Uh, put your comments down there, and uh, let's get to talking about uh, why this is happening and maybe what we could do to keep it from happening in the future. <laughs> Very nice. You're a smart dog. Oh my God. <laughs> what are you going to do with that big dog if you get him? Huh? Have you thought about that? What are you going to do with him if you get him? Huh? Whoa. What are you going to do with him if you get him? Huh? <laughs> uh, I'm getting too old for this kind of stuff.